I'm really happy to be kicking off tonight's Teach Me. So first of all, before we get started, huge thanks to everybody who supported this event and made it happen today. We've got um, Elise and um, Ange from VESA, but also I know a lot of other people at VESA have supported and helped out. We've got Lucy Atkins and Richard Hall from the Leicester City Council and De Montfort University Digital Literacy Team. Hey team, <laughs> over there, lovely to see you. And obviously, um, Bernie, Dean, Charlie and Daniel from Crown Hills um, for host, graciously hosting us tonight, for um, showing us what can be done. Um, about a year ago, I started using Twitter professionally and from that time, I was inspired by a guy called at AST support, a Ali, or Amjad Ali. And uh, he has a toolkit that he shares, lots of teaching ideas. Um, and it inspired me to set my own up, so I did. So um, it's got starter activities, plenary activities, differentiation ideas, equality, diversity, inclusion ideas, English ideas, maths ideas. And you see these as you work through, in addition to following that progressive solo taxonomy. Um, it's made my planning a whole lot similar, uh, simpler. Sorry. And uh, it's just something I'd like to share with everyone, and it's free to use, and you can access it now. So if you follow at Session Builder on Twitter, you'll be able to access the link there. So the app that we use is um, called Book Creator. Now, I've just been sat there thinking, I don't actually know how much it costs or whether it costs anything, but my class absolutely love this app, um, Book Creator, and um, they create their own books in there basically putting in photos <coughs> that we've taken and so on. So um, one of the books that one of the children in my class, which I'll show you in a minute, have created is um, one called Christmas Birds from Lithuania, which was based on a project that we're doing with Lithuania. Um, so then they choose their imported book. And once they've chosen their imported book, they can actually press on the record button and record um, themselves reading the book. So I'm now going to move on and show you an example of a child in my class who is actually um, made a book and this is a little boy called Evan who is six years old and he made the book and he recorded himself so if you play it now. Christmas birds from Lithuania. First we opened the parcel it was very it was full of birds from Lithuania. Then we So basically the child's made the book, recorded it <laughs> and then they've uploaded, we've uploaded it to Vimeo, password protected it because it's got pictures of children in there, but then shared it with the school in Lithuania who sent us those birds in the first place. So it started right from the very beginning, all done by a six-year-old boy who wanted to share something. And um, I just think it's a really fantastic way of getting children engaged, both through the fact that they've got an audience for it and it's really using thing, the digital technology that we've got for the best purpose. Plus, I can tell how well he's coming on with his reading and his writing there. And he wanted to spell everything right because he knew that the children in Lithuania wouldn't know whether it was spelt right or not, so he'd got to get it right. All that. If you go to, and I haven't got this written down, but I'll tweet it later. If you go to scoop.it people are now writing forward slash t forward slash programming in the primary school all hyphenated you'll find where I've curated everything I can lay my hands on about the new program of study read it from the bottom up thank you so AudioBoo, uh, as it's been said, has been mentioned, so instead of uh, students uh, writing responses or writing homework, uh, they can record it, um, they can get a, an account, all of our iPads in school have, uh, have the app, um, but they can access it on the internet, uh, device agnostic. Um, and if your, if your students do uh, some work and they send you the link, then you'll get a thing called a boo. So if you're on AudioBoo, you make boos, uh, and you'll get a link like this. So if you, just, uh, if, if you could just click on the, on the link. So if I click on that link, then it will take me to their site, a bit like Facebook if you posted something on there, uh, and it will take you to uh, that site that that student right. has made. Um, so uh, I've got students to make uh, some audio boosts for that. And then uh, the great thing about this is I can give feedback through the same system. Uh, because this is a device agnostic, on the bottom it's there, it says Mr. Sanderson's feedback. If we just listen to five seconds of that, um, then just, yeah, thank you. And you get the idea for that. Uh, so thank you. So I did that on my mobile phone, walking around the house, uh, making a cup of tea. So I didn't have to sit down with a pile of books and a lamp, the traditional marky marky dewey dewey. Um, I could do it whilst I was out, uh, you know, walking the dog if I had a dog. But you get the idea. And uh, 
this evening I'll just talk to you a little bit about a project I've been involved with this year that's been uh, funded by the DigiLit BSF Innovation Grant. So, um, marking and feedback has pretty much been on the agenda at our place for the last couple of years. Okay. Uh, this idea of hinge questions, they're great ways of diagnosing what students do or don't know at certain points in a lesson or in a learning sequence. So the, the, the principle behind them is it's a question or a, yeah, a question that you'd pose to students at a key moment in a lesson uh, before you move on to another idea and th that understanding is a prerequisite for whatever it is that comes next. In our geography uh, class in year eight, we'll teach, some, so we'll teach students a little bit about why it is that air temperature varies across the world. And we'll have a little play around with a few resources and a few ideas and then I'll drop uh, this kind of question <coughs> at them and the students have to select uh, the one that they feel is the right answer and they wave some little mini whiteboards at me. But the thing about hinge questions is the distractors are either misconceptions that students have had in the past or they're almost plausible but just not quite right. So in this case I'm looking for students to give me the answer C and if I feel that yeah they've got it great I'll move on if not I need to make an intervention kind of there and then to close the gap as it were. And then I found this quick key app and this will allow you to assess uh, multiple, <coughs> multiple choice questions. So I designed um, a little test for my year 10 students that had about 12, uh, 12 multiple choice questions that were designed with a hinge question sort of methodology in mind. And the students would then complete this little, little test and then I could just scan them there and then in the lesson with my iPad or my iPhone and, and get the results. And it was interesting because they all did quite badly, actually, on the test. But it'll sort it by a name. It'll sort it by who got the most in the test, who got the least in the test. But the really interesting stuff is when you take a look at how the class did at, on particular questions. And when I did that test, these two down the bottom were both questions that were about um, plate tectonics and the relationship between mountains and the movements of the Earth's crust. So the geek in me found this really fascinating because right there in the lesson, I was able to get some really useful data <coughs> about what that class did or didn't know. And I was able to do a little mini thing about plates and the relationship between mountains before they went on and, and, and did like a proper exam paper. So it was a very useful diagnostic okay, tool. So I'm Joe. Um, I'm just at Joe Badge to tweet me. Um, I realised I tweeted my link. I've put this on the blog. Got the wrong hashtag on it, so I will retweet it when I've just finished, okay? So, um, so I want to talk to you about using QR codes for paired reading. So in my, paired, in my guided reading session, um, I do a carousel activity, so there are some children doing independent tasks, and I have a little timetable, and every half term, every child gets to go on in a pair, and work as a pair on the iPad. And I feed different tasks through, and this is the first one that we started with this year. So let's see if I can go forward. Okay, so the first thing that we did, um, a, a fairly short um, Key Stage 1 book. They then used the iPad and Audio Boot, which is a free app to record sound, to record themselves reading it. They worked out their own little systems for telling the children to which book it was, how to turn the page, when to turn the page and so on. Some of them made noises, some of them clapped their hands, some of them just said, turn the page! Um, and literally, and um, then once it's recording on Audio Boo, um, I've got Audio Boo linked to our class blog. So it automatically gets published as an audio file on the class blog, and then they can take the URL from the class blog and turn it into a QR code. They made a little instruction manual even for the Key Stage 1 children so they knew how to do it. You hold it, uh, the app over the picture, and then it links you straight to the page where the audio is recorded. It meant that the younger children could pick up their book, find the printed barcode in there, open the book up, scan it and listen to the story. Um, I've come from Humphrey Perkins in Barrow. If you know of it, it's, um, it was a middle school gone into a high school. Um, one of the big selling points for it going into a high school is that all of our pupils are given iPads. Um, I started in the school in September, never used an iPad before in my life. So it was very interesting, thrown in at the deep end um, as a head of department, going into a department where we had very few resources, very few schemes of work. Um, uh, staff that weren't very happy so uh, basically going into a department which was quite tough so one of the first things that I was trained on using the iPads by Joe Moretti I don't know if any of you've heard of him um, was using iTunes U. Schemes of work and things were not kept in a central place um, we were also using iPads so I thought let's try and see if we can combat these uh, put them together make them compatible um, 
I Choose You Course Manager enables you to put all of your courses online, um, all of your resources, all of your worksheets, all of your uh, schemes of work, everything. So they are completely available for staff, pupils, heads of department, whoever. Um, this is something that I've used really, really well with Year 11s at the moment. Year 10s, and, uh, year 10, sorry, not Year 11s yet. they will be Year 11s next year. Year 10s, whereas everything that I've uh, made for them in each course that they're doing, so every unit of work I've made into a course, it's gone onto iTunes U. They've got every single worksheet. They've got every single homework sheet. They've got everything that, that I use, all of the YouTube clips, all of the PowerPoints, everything that's in a lesson is on there. So there's no excuses for, no homework. There's no excuses for, I don't understand this, because they can go back and look at everything so it's really really great it's great for parents it's great for staff it's great for um, even cover I've used it with um, I've given them the link told them to go on there have a look at lesson three and it's really you know it's really great and something that we are developing around the school and and hopefully by the end of this year every department will have all courses put onto iTunes U so it's all there transferable um, and everybody can see it so that's it thank you and I've really enjoyed all of the um, speakers tonight, as I'm sure everybody has here. It's fantastic to be able to model this kind of practice and to be able to give space to educators to be fun and creative and share their practice tonight. Um, I hope that you've been as entertained, as informed as I've been tonight. And I hope that we have another Teach Meet again in the near future too. But a final round of applause for all of our speakers tonight. Thank you.